Good morning, everybody. Jimmy with two of the top grain. Got our outriggers out, got our little pads down. Just got leveled up. As you can see by this little bubble level here, it is 0.0, .0 on the x-axis and 0.0, .0 on the y-axis. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. Switch this over to crane mode. Push this button down here, lets us engage the controls. And we will pull the right stick back That'll give us some boom up. I need to clean the windshield. It's a little dirty. Anyway, we're gonna boom it up out of the rack. We're gonna get up to about, I don't know, 60 degrees or so. And then we will uh, double check our level. Right there's 30 degrees. There's about 60.4. We'll go ahead and hit this button up here and we'll double check check our level. Yeah, we're still good. So I'm gonna reach behind the seat back here off the right side. There is a positive house lock. And it looks like I need to swing just a little bit. Positive house locks up. It's right behind someone's chocolate dipped Krispy Kreme donuts. I don't know why those are in here, but anyway, there's the positive house lock. What that does, it drops a pin through the turntable, keeps the superstructure from rotating. Pretty important when you're going down the road. It'd be a bad deal have that thing have that boom slide off that rack and uh, over the side of the crane. So. Anyway, in these boom trucks, if you have a positive house lock, anytime you're going down the road, that needs to be engaged. But I'm gonna, we've got a little bit of time to kill. We're at a hospital. I guess, I mean, you can't can't really see what, I, I won't even be able to see the unit we're going after. It's not that one, it's another one up on the roof. But I guess right in that little brick building there is where their MRI machine is. And we're gonna be fairly close to it. And they've got a patient in MRI right now, so they don't want us doing anything over the building, which is understandable, I guess. So I'm gonna jump out, clean some glass, find a good place for this camera, and uh, we will get ready. All right, we're running a little bit of stink out here. Hopefully you can see it. Oh, look up. It says it's about a 60 foot radius or so. We're gonna run out about 100 feet of boom. Uh, while that's happening, I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant about those Krispy Kremes. I don't typically operate this crane, at least I'm not in it very often. Uh, one thing you guys will find with me in that ATF 180 or that 200 ton Sedano, I typically don't eat in that crane. Uh, I will occasionally if we're on a job and I've got a load hanging or something or I can't leave the seat and I've been sitting there for 
hours than I will sometimes eat in the crane. But I try not to make a habit of it. And I definitely don't keep food in it. And here's why. Food in a crane attracts mice. It seems like a mouse has a particular affection for human food. And their second favorite thing to eat seems to be electrical wiring. So unless you are just impeccable about housekeeping in your crane, as far as sweeping it out, vacuuming the crumbs out, all of that, I would recommend trying to keep food out of your crane. Just for the simple reason that it attracts mice. And then once, once the mice get in it, they figure out some place that they can go to eat some food, stay warm, stay out of the elements. And then all of a sudden they build a house and then they start having kids. And before you know it, you have families of mice living in your crane, chewing up your electrical wiring. So, like I said, I would strongly caution against eating in your crane, or at least storing food in your crane. With that being said, these Krispy Kremes are going to exit the building here pretty quick. I'm not going to eat them, but they're not going to stay in here. So, rant over. Take it for what you will. Some people probably think I'm crazy but I don't have mice in, in the old 200 tons of Dono. I guess another thing we can talk, talk about while we're sitting here, doing nothing, waiting, like uh, we often do in cranes. We've got the load charts here for the old Manatex 5128. This is the boom length we're gonna use. It's 103 feet. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. And we're going to be right around a 75 foot radius, 65 to 75 foot radius. So this crane has different load charts based on over the rear, which would be inside the span of the rear outriggers, or a full 360. So this is over the rear, this is full 360. And then we got our bold line. But we're going to come down here to 65 foot. We'll just meet in the middle and we'll go to a 70 foot radius over the side with 103 feet of boom. I'm good for 5,740 pounds. If I was straight over the rear, I'd be good for 8,060, which is where I would prefer to set up, but on this job, we can't do it. And then remember the bold line. We talked about this in one of my other videos. Everything above the bold line is limited by the structural integrity of the machine. Everything below the bold line is limited by stability. So as you can see, this bold line dips down because that's over the rear. Well, it uses the whole front of the truck, like the cab, engine, all that, as counterweight. So it is limited by the structural integrity of the machine. Once I swing over the side, you can see that line jumps up over here. At that point, since we're over the side, it doesn't have all that extra counterweight. It's limited by the stability of the machine. So if you exceed your capacity in this area, you'll tip over before you break the crane in half. If you exceed your capacity in this area, you may break the boom off before you ever start getting the crane light. And that has gotten more than one person in trouble, I promise. Used to be the old way of running cranes, you'd just run it until you felt the back end start coming off the ground or the opposite end. And you can't really do that anymore. These, these newer cranes, uh, a lot of times they'll break before they tip over. So, thought I would share that with everybody. But now we just sit here and wait. And one thing you'll learn if you ever get into operating cranes is uh, it does take some patience because there are times that you just wait and wait. Alright, so we're getting some stuff done here. Seems like anyway. I'd scoot the camera back further where you guys could see what I'm doing, but that would be in my left ear. I guess it'd probably just be looking in my ear. So 
So I guess what we're doing first, we're going to fly the new curb up. Um, set it on the roof. They'll rig up the old unit. We'll fly it down, set on a trailer. They'll probably set the curb by hand because it's pretty small. And then we'll put the new unit on top of the curb. At least that's the way I think it's going to work out. reminding myself this crane does not have free swing there's no swing brake on the floor when you let go of the swing lever it stops He's ready for it to go. So we're going to go the long way around because I don't want us flying over the building. Looks like it's got a little water in it. It's only going to get some water on the car. foot radius. Sixty three point nine degree boom angle. I got kind of a general idea.
I typically, when they're cutting stuff loose like that, I like to raise the ball up where they're not going to smack it with their hand. Some people will just get it above head height, but you know, when they're yanking those straps out of there, sometimes they're flinging their arms up in the air or whatever. So I like to get it up there high enough where they're not going to hit it with their hands. I hook one short and left one long. All right. I think we're gonna go clear around. Uh, maybe, I don't know. He said they were gonna see about bringing their unit in behind me, so. Let's see if that's still the plan. Yeah, it looks like he's bringing rigging over, so. I think they're ready to pull this open. Seven point four foot radius. Seventy feet wasn't a bad guess from just looking at it from the ground.
just do it again. I don't know what's causing that PTO to kick out. I don't know if I got a bad temperature sensor, if I got a bad, you know, speed sensor inside the transmission. I don't know if I've got something dropping voltage or what. If any of you guys have any of these Manitexes on a Freightliner chassis and, you're, and you've had issues with the PTO kicking out and you've rectified it, if you could give me a heads up, it would be fantastic. It's really bad when you're swinging and the PTO kicks out because then it sets the swing brake and the boom stops swinging all of a sudden and the load swings out, kind of makes you look like an idiot, scares you. The way the PTO is set up in this truck is it uses hydraulic pressure from the transmission to engage a clutch on the PTO pump. So there's a little hydraulic line, probably a three-eighths line, maybe quarter-inch line, I don't know. A little hydraulic line underneath the transmission comes out of the side of the transmission case, I believe, over to an electronically shifted valve, like a spool valve. And the PTO switch engages the spool valve, which allows hydraulic pressure into the clutch, which engage, well, allows transmission line pressure into the clutch which engages the PTO however I could have an electrical issue or a fault with the transmission because it when you flip the PTO switch that sends a signal to the transmission control module which then supplies power to the spool valve so the TCM actually has control over the PTO function Or it could be a pressure issue if maybe the TCM is telling it to be engaged but it doesn't, it's not maintaining line pressure from the transmission. Or I could even have a voltage drop from somewhere up here because I can start and stop the engine on the train or on the truck from the upper. So it could be getting an interrupted signal from up here telling it to shut down or whatever. It, I don't know, it's a needle in a haystack. And it's one of those deals that's completely intermittent, which makes it even that much more difficult to find it.
have got so close to me, but oh well. That's where he wants it. Alright, so that's it. We'll just take the old unit down there. I guess they got a big air handler coming in about a month. Uh, it's going to be about 30 feet long. 9,000 pounds or something. We'll have to come back and put that up. Boom, we're going to fold her up and take it home.